Hello everyone and welcome to another Brickified Ranked List. Today we are taking a look at and ranking every LEGO Indiana Jones set ever released. We also have a new ranking system so stay tuned for that, but let's get into it. At number 21 we have the Brickmaster Indiana Jones Jeep. This was a promotional Brickmaster polybag which came with Indy, but it's the same Indy which appeared in a total of 15 other sets. Overall it's just a small simple looking Jeep that doesn't hold enough water against the other sets in the theme. Before I move on to number 20, I wanted to quickly explain this new ranking system I've developed. In the on-screen spreadsheet, I have three categories highlighted, being value, desirability, and my subjective rank. Value looks at the original price of the set versus how many pieces and minifigures included. Desirability looks at the current aftermarket value versus original retail. And lastly, my subjective thoughts on each set. These are then equally averaged to give a final ranking for this list, but let's get back to the sets. At number 20, we have the fight on the flying wing from Raiders of the Lost Ark. With 376 pieces and four minifigures, one of which being exclusive, this set just isn't inspiring. One, this plane never even flew in the movie, and points two, three, and four is that it just looks really bad. The angles of the plane aren't recreated well, and what even is this large one-piece wing element? The final nail in the coffin is the LEGO Star Wars Jedi Interceptor cockpit, which just looks like it's from a different galaxy on this thing. However, the tanker truck looks okay, just a bit small. At number 19, we have Ambush in Cairo from Raiders of the Lost Ark. This set ranked rather high on the desirability scale with a 700% increase in its current aftermarket value. This is 100% due to all four minifigures being exclusive. However, away from the figs, the builds are just random street merchant structures that most likely quickly made their way into the endless Lego bin. At number 18, we have Peril and Peru from Indiana Jones 4. I just rewatched all four Indiana Jones movies this past week, and I have to say, I don't remember this plane in the movie, like, at all. So in my mind, it's forgettable, and the stats show that it's also not very desirable. This is likely because the only exclusive figure is the pilot, which doesn't look all that great. However, on the good side of things, I can say that the plane build looks pretty good for 2008, and I do also like the color scheme. Ooh, I know a lot of people aren't going to like this, but the stats are in. At number 17, we have the Temple of Doom from Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. Look guys, I gave it a 7 out of 21. This was a very controversial set for LEGO to make. Heck, even the movie was controversial, and they had to work out a special first-time rating of PG-14. Yes, I even watched the behind-the-scenes in prep of this video. But overall, this is set up as a really great LEGO playset. If you ignore the child slaves from just moments before the scene, I was a little easy on this set, giving it a 7. My original thoughts were around maybe 11 out of 21, but I can see how good of a playset it would have been for children. However, for me, its footprint is just too large and spread out to look good for display. Lots of exclusives, though. At number 16, we have the San Diego Comic Con exclusive. This set absolutely blew the grading curve on the desirability scale at a 2,000% value increase. Yeah, that's 20 times the original $50 price. However, its original value wasn't great, being very expensive for the time at 50 bucks. From what I can tell, it is very similar, if not the same exact build of the Brickmaster Jeep we saw earlier, and the additional two Uga Warriors weren't even exclusive. But that's just a San Diego Comic Con set for you. I will say though, it's a pretty satisfying looking little build. But I ain't paying a grand for this. At number 15, we have the Jungle Cutter from The Crystal Skull. This is a middle of the road set, but had a great original value at 40 bucks for a rather sizable jungle cutter and a good amount of Russian military minifigures. Overall, the scene in the movie is pretty good, but not really something that I would care to display, but I could definitely see it being a really good playset for children. Heck, one of my favorite childhood hobbies was hatcheting down small trees in the woods, so it gets my approval. At number 14, we have the Shanghai Chase from Indy 2, Temple of Doom, which ranked towards the upper middle in all three categories. I like it for the exclusive figures, of which we get four. Also like the two car builds. They are a little dated and could have been done maybe a bit better, but I think they would work well in a LEGO modular city because of their size and the time period style. At number 13, we have the fighter plane attack from The Last Crusade. And I have to say that I'm disappointed where this ended up on the list because it was my penultimate set in the list. I love Indy 3 because Sean Connery really added some humor to the movie, especially in this scene. Sean, I'm sorry. They got us. 
Like, not only did LEGO give us two German military planes, but they gave us one from each of the Great World Wars. However, some things I think that drags this set down a bit is the incredibly overstudded look of the plane wings and the lack of exclusive figures. At number 12, we have the Jungle Duel from Crystal Skull, and come on guys, I'm actually starting to think this new ranking system is flawed, because we went from a classic indie fighter plane chase to a random set in the woods. However, the set has somehow grown over 800% in aftermarket value, almost double the percentage of the last set. Like what? Do we not like official military vehicles from LEGO or soldiers? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, this is a scene in the movie. You get a tent and no exclusives. I personally had this at 21. At number 11, we have the Shashila Cemetery Battle from Crystal Skull. I saw this movie with my grandfather in theaters as a kid, and this scene definitely scared me a bit. So I guess it can be a good playset maybe? Well, I hope so because that's what it is and I will give credit where it's due and it packs in a good amount of play features for its given size. And here are the figures. Indy's only exclusive for having an open mouth, if you were wondering. Breaking our way into the top 10, we have the Venice chase scene from The Last Crusade. And I'm glad that it at least made its way to the top 10 because I had it at number 5. I really liked this scene in the movie and the boats looked awesome and gladly I believe they look really good in LEGO form too. I would happily display these boats at a dock in my future LEGO city, but that means I'll probably have to fork up around $600 to get the Bricklink Venetian houses to go with it. But this would also be an amazing playset for children to whoosh around their boats in a deadly chase and getting to slide the boats under the pedestrian bridge. An all around great set where every minifigure is also exclusive. At number 9 we have the Temple of the Crystal Skull from Indiana Jones 4. This was the largest Indiana Jones set for the last 15 years and has only since been dethroned by a 2023 set coming up later on the list. At $80 retail, this would have been an unheard of value in 2023 with 929 pieces, but it was a fair value back in 2008. It came with 10 minifigures, which is also the most minifigures ever for the theme. There is a lot of play features for children, but ultimately, I just think it looks kind of bad. While it gets a few bonus points for looking somewhat similar to the unreleased Star Wars Yavin 4 base, in the movie, the only thing that happens here is that they're running away from the natives down the temple. And yeah, it... It just has a lot of things going on, and in my opinion, none of them look all that great. At number 8, we have the Indiana Jones Motorcycle Chase from The Last Crusade. While this was a very good chase scene in the movie, I do think it's a little high on the list for the build you get. Like, there's hardly any Lego pieces in this set, it's mostly just large molded pieces for the motorcycles, so the building experience definitely isn't there. However, I could see this being an absolute favorite for kids to recreate the movie scenes. At number 7, we have the Race for the Stolen Treasure from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Being from the original 2008 LEGO Indiana Jones wave, I think the builds do date it to the time period. While these vehicles are from the 30s and look very different from what we're used to nowadays, but something just feels off to me. However, you do get three exclusive German soldiers with different face prints, which is really cool and I do like the canopy on the back of the truck, even though the truck does look a little too short in my opinion. At number 6, we have the new 2023 fighter plane chase from The Last Crusade. I would have personally put the original fighter plane attack set higher than this one because I like that portion of the chase a bit better, but overall this is a great new set for the theme and comes in at a pretty good value, at least in terms of LEGO's recent pricing. The German World War II style plane looks a bit better than the original 2009 version, but still seems a bit blockier than LEGO has the potential to make it. However, the updated prints for Henry Jones Sr. look pretty good, and this is his only appearance in the wave. Also, the car build looks really, really good and accurate. I will definitely be picking this set up very soon. Breaking our way into the top 5, we have the river chase scene from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. This set comes with Indy, Marion, and two Russian guards, which is a pretty good figure selection, as well as a sub-aquatic vehicle, a motorized raft, and a rather lackluster tree build that I could have done without. But it does remind me of the recent forest hideout gift with purchase for some reason. Overall, this is a great looking playset for children, and I gotta say, I love the look and the color scheme of the sub-aquatic vehicle. At number 4, we have the new 2023 Temple of the Golden Idol from Raiders of the Lost Ark. This set was number one on my list because it's the first direct to consumer 18 plus set for the theme. And of all the movies that Lego has made sets for, I think Indiana Jones is one of those that should mostly be 18 plus sets. There's just some crazy scenes in these movies that aren't for children. 
I have to say that while the colors are not 100% accurate to the original scene, I think they add an excellent pop of color and contrast that really makes this set stand out. While it is sort of a diorama set, it also has a good amount of play features like the boulder that can chase the characters and so forth. Overall, I think that this is a good step forward for the theme and I hope to see more like this in the future. Now we've made it to the top three, and before I move on, I wanted to ask that if you enjoyed this video up to this point, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. More content like this to come, and it would mean a lot to me. Thanks! Now at number three, we have the original 2008 Temple Escape from Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is probably number one for a lot of people that are nostalgic to the original set. And I could definitely see that. The only reason that this set won out the remake at number 4 is because of the desirability of this set. Which makes a lot of sense because it was a well thought out playset and could also display quite nicely. It also came with 3 exclusive minifigures and all around it was just a really great set with enough play features and displayability to make just about anyone happy. At number 2, the penultimate spot, we have the new 2023 Escape from the Lost Tomb. This made it here on the list because it ranked number 3 in original value. And I also gave it pretty high marks because not only is it a great value at 40 bucks, but I also think it's a bit more accurate looking than the original set it copies. This is because I think the large Finxes look more accurate and I just like how they crash down the walls, which is also accurate. I do however still like the original a bit better and that's a perfect segue into our number one spot being the original 2008 Indiana Jones and the Lost Tomb from Raiders of the Lost Ark. While the new remake of this set is a crazy value for today's LEGO standard, this original set was just an insane value and topped the charts at number one in this category. I also gave it pretty high marks because I just really like the way it looks. While the new version is probably a bit more accurate with the size of the sphinxes, I just like the pillars in this set and their size. I don't know, it just makes it look a bit more substantial and come on guys, for 20 bucks this set was an absolute steal. It also came in at the second highest in desirability at about 13% its original value. So overall, the set was a shoe in at number one in this ranking system. Well guys, there we have it. All 21 Indiana Jones sets ranked. What did you all think about this new ranking system and trying to make it a bit more objective versus just my subjective thoughts? Comment down below if you liked this method. If not, should I go back to just my own subjective thoughts? And if you are in favor of this approach, let me know if you have any recommendations to improve. And with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. And until next time, keep building and thanks for watching.